This is a demonstration on how to apply oxygen to a uh, patient with a non-rebreather and a nasal cannula. So the first thing to keep in mind about oxygen tanks is that when they're under pressure, if they are dropped, they can become a missile. Um, they're under a lot of pressure and they can go flying through even brick walls. Um, this was tested on Mythbusters if you want to look up the YouTube video. It's kind of fun to watch. Um, so anytime you have the oxygen tank, if it's standing upright, you should always have a hand on it. If you don't have a hand on it and you need to use your hands to do something else, you can always lay the tank down safely in the oxygen bag that it's stored in. I'm being a little unsafe here, but my oxygen cylinder is actually empty, so it's not under pressure. So that makes it a little safer for us. So um, the first thing you want to do to apply oxygen, first of all, you should be wearing PPE because you're contacting a patient, so have gloves on. The next thing you want to do is your oxygen tank will be turned off. This one's turned on. Your oxygen tank is turned off, and there could be a little bit of dust in the seal where the oxygen comes out. So we want to clear that dust out. The way we do that is to just barely open the cap and you'll hear a little sound like pss. Okay, so it's sort of like when you, uh, if you get a soda from the vending machine and you twist the top off to just a little, let a little bit of the air out and then put the cap right back on. That's exactly what we want to do. So just a little pss to clear the seal. Now the, the seal's been cleared. The oxygen tank is still closed. I want to apply my oxygen regulator. You will notice that there are two pins on the regulator. I'm not sure, let me get closer so you can see these. There are these two pins, and you will also notice on the cylinder, there are these two holes. This is called the pin indexing system, and it just makes sure that we're using an oxygen regulator on an oxygen tank and not using the inappropriate equipment. So I'm gonna line up these two pins with the two holes. And you should see the, the regulator seat in there very nicely. It should be perpendicular to your oxygen tank and everything should look nice and straight. Okay, at this time, I can now turn on my oxygen tank by using this knob. If you don't have a knob up here, you may have to use an oxygen wrench. But for this tank, it has a knob, so I'm just gonna open that up all the way. Okay, at that time, you will hear the regulator pressurize. You'll hear a little pop sound and you will now look at the gauge and you will see how much oxygen is in your tank. You always want to look and make sure that your tanks are full or near full. Um, this, a tank of this size is a Super D or a Jumbo D um, cylinder. This tank will only last about 30 minutes when being used with a non-rebreather at full power. So they don't last very long. So you want to check your, your, your tank and see how much uh, pressure you have. You also want to check for any leaks. If there are any leaks, you'll hear a sound of air coming out. Okay, at this time, I'm now ready to actually hook this up to uh, my non-rebreather. So this is a non-rebreather. Um, it's a mask that's gonna go on the patient's face. These holes here are where the patient exhales so that the, ox the uh, exhaled carbon dioxide leaves the mask and the inhaled oxygen will be stored in this bag and come up through the mask. So the first thing I wanna do is take my non-rebreather and attach it to the regulator like so. Okay, the regulator has a knob here where I can adjust how much oxygen flow I want. For a non-rebreather, I want to have at least 10 liters per minute of oxygen. Some sources say at least 12 liters per minute of oxygen with a maximum of 15. So I always go to the maximum 15 liters per minute. So I'll just turn my gauge until I see 15. At that time, I have 15 liters per minute of oxygen flowing. And again, my tank is empty, so for demonstration purposes, this is not gonna look exactly right. But I'll put my finger on this one-way valve here, and that will inflate this bag. So this bag will inflate. When this bag is inflated, my mask is ready to apply to my patient. So this goes over the mouth and nose, and the strap just goes behind the head. Okay, that's how you apply a non-rebreather to a patient. Now, if my patient's not, uh, um, no longer needs oxygen or is not um, able to tolerate the mask, I may need to remove it. If I need to remove it, I'll always remove the mask from the patient first, then stop the flow of oxygen. Otherwise, they're breathing into a mask, which is worse than having no oxygen at all. So I can now remove this from the tank. I'm finished with the non-rebreather, and I will attach the nasal cannula. Attach the nasal cannula. 
The nasal cannula is to be applied between one and six liters per minute of oxygen. If you go any higher than that, you'll hear it going pssst, and it just really irritates the sinuses. So I'm gonna put this to six liters per minute. Okay, I'm gonna take my nasal cannula and come from the front of the patient, inserting the holes into the nostrils, and then coming around behind the ears. We don't want to put this all the way around the patient's head because they could lean on it and cause a problem. So that's going to be secured by the ears. Okay. If the patient is not tolerating the nasal cannula or ready to discontinue oxygen, we will remove the nasal cannula, remove the oxygen tubing, okay. stop the flow of oxygen with the regulator. Okay. So I've stopped the flow of oxygen with the regulator, but my tank is still on. That means my regulator is pressurized, okay? So I'm gonna turn my oxygen tank off. Okay, the oxygen tank's been turned off, righty tighty. At this point, um, my regulator still has, it has, is pressurized. So I need to relieve the, the oxygen that's stored in this regulator. I'm gonna do that by turning it all the way up as high as it'll go, and you will hear the air leak out. Again, not with this tank because it's empty, but you'll hear a Okay, at that point you'll know the regulator has been depressurized. You can turn the oxygen off. And we can now remove the regulator by untwisting the tightening bolt and removing that. And that's it for oxygen.